Hi everyone, I'm Anu Katharisen, fertility physician and doctor mom, and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about hysteroscopy. What is a hysteroscopy? How does it work? What are the risks involved? So let's talk about this today. What is a hysteroscopy? A hysteroscopy is a minor surgical procedure that we do to evaluate the uterine cavity. We often use it in infertility if we're suspicious for polyps, certain types of fibroids, adhesions, or septums. What's involved is it's usually done with anesthesia and we advance a telescope type instrument and it will go into the cervix and in the uterus. It's attached to a camera so we're able to look directly inside the uterus that way. I'm going to take you through now step by step what to expect if you're undergoing a hysteroscopy. We will often do a hysteroscopy if a patient has regular cycles in the time interval between when they finish bleeding from their period and before they ovulate, aiming for that particular time window. Another way to do it is have patients call with the first day of their period, and then we put them on birth control. The birth control allows more flexibility to schedule the procedure. We're not limited to a certain time window. Next is meeting with the physician for the pre-op visit. At this visit, you'll meet with a physician and they'll go over the surgery in a little bit more detail. They'll go over risks of the surgery, benefits of the surgery. They'll go over making sure to not eat anything after midnight, the night before the surgery. They'll go over recovery time and if any pain medications that they would recommend. I'm gonna try and walk you through the steps involved with the hysteroscopy. So once the patient goes into the operating room, they will undergo anesthesia. Once this is done, usually the physician will do a pelvic exam just to feel the direction of the uterus. This helps with later direction of the instruments. Then the patient will be prepped and draped in a normal sterile fashion, and the physician will go scrub in and gown up, and then we're ready to start the procedure. A timeout will be performed also to verify the patient and the procedure that we're doing. Once we're ready to start, we'll put a speculum in and we'll put a single tooth tenaculum, a little grasping device on the anterior lip of the cervix. And this allows us just more control of the mobility of the cervix. Then we will sometimes do a little local anesthesia around the cervix, and then we will start to dilate the cervix with little dilators. The reason why we have to dilate the cervix is that we have to dilate it so that we can get the telescope instrument in. Once it's appropriately dilated, we will advance the telescope instrument. It's a little bit thicker than a pen, and it will go into the cervix and in the uterus. It's attached to a camera, and fluid will be going in and coming out of the device. This allows the uterus to stay distended so that we can see. So we'll look evaluate the uterine cavity, we'll look at the tubal osteas on both sides, and we'll look and see if there's any polyps, fibroids, adhesions, septums, any sort of pathology. We can introduce little shaving devices through the hysteroscope and remove pathology such as polyps or fibroids. If there are adhesions or septums, we can also introduce little scissor instruments through that and cut those away also. So that's pretty much the procedure. Once the cavity is nice and normal and the procedure is complete, we will remove the instruments. Then we'll remove that tenaculum from the anterior lip of the cervix and we will make sure there's no bleeding. If there's bleeding, sometimes we'll put pressure. Sometimes we'll use a little medication to help stop bleeding. And then we remove the speculum and that's the procedure. Things that are normal to expect after a hysteroscopy are some cramping and some light bleeding, and pain control is usually achieved with Motrin over-the-counter. The recovery for this procedure is usually about 24 hours. Risks of the procedure. Any surgery has risks, including bleeding, infection, and damage to nearby organs. So that includes the bladder above and the bowel below, but we stay in the confine of the uterus. So chances of anything happening to these structures are less than 1%. It would have to involve poking a hole through the uterus called uterine perforation, which is about a 1% risk. Other risks are fluid overload. So when the hysteroscope is in, fluid is going in and coming out, and we're monitoring that balance. We have to set a certain limit if more fluid goes in than comes out based on the type of fluid that we're using. If we hit that limit, we have to stop the procedure and come back at a later time to complete it. The reason is is because we worry about fluid overload. This is usually more a risk in patients with septums or fibroids. These are tougher tissue to get through, so it takes longer, so there's more risk of hitting that limit. Whereas with polyps, it's soft tissue and usually lower risk for fluid overload. That is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I hope you'll give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, you can leave them for me there also. Thank you again so much for watching and see you in the next video.